It's Johnny Jones and I'm here at home and today I'm going to show you how to build a wonderful simple antenna with amazing results. Um, if you like this video then please subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers and uh, guys this is going to be a long video. It's going to have some theory in it. Um, I don't want to make one of those videos where it's like here cut it at this place and cut it at this amount of place and put it up. No, I wanted to go into some theory that way you guys can understand if you have any issues with your uh, antenna. Um, we do really well with this setup so uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Okay, so I thought I'd show you the idea first. Um, this is a corner from a greenhouse kit. It's actually the same greenhouse kit that I used to build my first antenna, which is my first video actually on my channel. Um, <clears throat> I've knotted one in. I stripped this wire. We'll calculate the length in just a second. Um, I have a knot here. I have ran um, the wire through this hole here that I've drilled in there because we don't want any tension on these wires um, on any solder joints because they'll break. So this is going to slide in here. It will catch. This end of course will be shortened and attached to the coaxial cable and the same thing will be done with this end. Um, so that is my idea. It is a simple dipole. So the simplest antenna that you can build is a dipole. The problem with a dipole for the CB band is that it's very easy to build but it's horizontally polarized. Uh, that means your voltage is going in the horizontal direction where your B field is in this direction. So that makes it very hard to talk to a vertical antenna, which let's face it, most people have in the CB band. So what do you do about this? Well, <clears throat> it's real hard to do. You just go, done. So now your antenna is vertical and you will be able to talk to other verticals no problem. Now, I could have, of course, made a um, 102 still whip and put radials on it. But this is for the most basic antenna that I can think of in teaching how to build. And the radials um, are a little bit more complicated to work with. Um, I wanted to do something quick, something easy, and something that anyone could do. And I don't think it's a bad antenna at all. It's going to be a hell of a lot better than any shortened antenna that you can get. Um, having said that, most people do think that radials um, have to be the same length as the main element. That's not true. I think Dave Kasler was even talking about this. Um, you can have um, uh, eighth wave radials, 16, 32 of them, and do a lot better than just having four radials of the same length as your main element. So, why are steel whips 102 inches? You hear that a lot. Why 102? Well, I don't know the velocity factor of steel, the, the spring steel that they used, but let's go ahead and pretend like we're going to do this for the first time. All right, so we first take the speed of light, which is 300 million, but since we're dealing with megahertz, we don't have to worry about adding all those zeros. Um, like one million divided by one million is one, the same as one divided by one. So we're dealing with millions, we can use 300. So 300, which is the speed of light, divided by whatever frequency we're working with, um, let's make it for the middle of band, which is 19. 20 is not technically the middle of the band. It's actually two uh, or 20 kilohertz up from 19. So we will use 19, which is 27.185. And that brings us up to 11.03 meters. Well, we don't really want to mess with meters. So let's go times 3.28 and that should be in feet so 36 feet that's our wavelength okay but we're using 
a quarter wave antenna. It's actually a half wave. We got a quarter here and a quarter here. So what we do is we divide by four and we get nine, nine feet. Okay, but we have to take into consideration the velocity factor of the medium. Now, the velocity factor will be lower in a wire than it will in free space. So let's go times 0 0.95. You can't really go wrong with 95%. Um, that's about the velocity factor for copper. If you make it too low, um, if you make your velocity factor any lower than this and it happens to be higher, well, you got to extend your antenna some. But if you calculate it a little too high, that's all right. You just shorten your antenna. So uh, 0.95 is what I always go to. That's 8.59 feet. So what's that in inches? Well, times 12, enter, 103 inches. And that corresponds very closely to the 102 steel whip that we see. Now, of course, um, an inch isn't going to matter too much. You have a lot of variables. For one, you have spacers and washers and things um, underneath that steel whip to make it longer, usually. Um, but also, thing cha things change as you get closer to the ground and above the ground. So, around 102, 103, 104, something right there is about right. I usually go about 106 and then trim down to residency. So, what next should we talk about? Oh yes, so when we put this up, we need to keep the coaxial cable at a right angle because if it does this, we're going to have common mode current. So let me make this a bit bigger. So if we do this, we have common mode current, why? Well, we have movement of electrons in the radials, elements, and on the outside of the coaxial cable, we have a shield. Well, the shield can actually radiate and disrupt your pattern, cause all sorts of issues, noise. So what you can do is you can actually curl your coaxial cable like that. That looks almost like the Greek letter phi, so I should make it a little better looking, huh? So basically make an inductor out of the outside of your um, coaxial cable. Or you can use a type 43 ferrite toroidal core um, to create extra inductance to block the RFI. But that is something that we will talk about later. Let's get on to the actual build itself and how it works, how I'm gonna hook it together, and what we need to do to get it up in the air. Then all these factors can be taken into consideration depending on what we get. Now sometimes you'll get a, um, you'll get very good, um, no common mode current, you won't have any problems, and sometimes you'll get a lot. So it just sort of depends, really. So I do have a Type 43 ferrite ring that we can use if push comes to shove. Um, I am not actually going to put a PL259 connector. Actually, excuse me, SO239. SO239 is a socket. PL259 is the plug. Uh, I'm not going to put a... Um, plug in that. I'm not going to put a socket in it because I don't have a run of coaxial cable right now, which I should, but I don't. So I do have a lot of busted broken antennas and one has a, a cord or coaxial cable that's torn. So I'm just going to run that through this. It will come up here, of course. This will be pulled in. That will be soldered. Both ends will come out. And then we'll string this up in a tree and see how far we get out. And hopefully, we'll do pretty well. Now, about SWR. So, in a dipole, um, your feed point impedance is about 73 ohms. Um, where in a mono with radials, it's going to be 36, something like that. 
um, and then of course you move the radials down at a 45 degree angle to change the feed point impedance to about 50 ohms. But so in this Tana and Tana, you're never going to get exactly one to one SWR, but that's okay because we're going to get, let's see, 73 ohms divided by 50 equals 1.46. So we'll have about 1.4 to 1.5 SWR, which is totally fine and totally usable. You don't want over two. Um, anything under two is great. Um, the loss at one to one versus one to 1.9 is very little anyway. So I'm happy with 1.5. You can use a, um, a different coaxial cable to match it, but you're still going to have um, a matching issue at your 50 ohm radio obviously so just use regular coaxial cable you should be fine of course you can with one exact frequency with one specific frequency you can change the length of your coaxial cable to match a certain impedance to get one to one but that's not even really worth it in this case so we're just going to stick with what we got and we should do good should do well we should do well you moron we should do well so I am using an old AC cord, an extension cord, that uh, went down the tubes. And of course, I just cut it down to uh, over 8 foot and uh, decided to use two pieces here. Um, this is stranded, which is good, you know, because due to the uh, skin effect, you actually get uh, lower resistance with using stranded copper braid, which is great for us. Let's see if I can finagle this in here there we go good so now we just have to put a knot in here which shouldn't cause any significant inductance issues um, we'll cut this down after we put a knot in it, solder it up, and pull it through until it's nice and tight. And then this will be strung up using guy wires. So I'm very happy to try this out tomorrow. Make sure they're not touching in there. We want to keep them in a 90 degree angle, remember. So I put a hole in here. You can't really, you don't want to knot um, coaxial cable um, because you don't want to change the impedance of it. You don't want to crush the dielectric in there. So what I did was because I don't want this to pull out and I don't want to put more knots in this I decided to make this right here in the side run this through not to make an you don't want to make a tight bend you want it to be obtuse and because that's going to be a little bit weak I'm going to zip tie that off And that should work just fine in this instance. OK, 
Okay. I feel like that should work all right. As long as it stays on there. So, there's the antenna completed. Tomorrow we need to hook it up. It uh, worked out fine on the inside. I was managed to get the knots through just fine. I had to do a little bit of tinkering to uh, get the knots tight enough so that I could pull the uh, elements apart and the braid from the center. But we have it done. I went ahead and uh, put this together so it wouldn't be all over the place. And tomorrow we'll test it out, see what happens. Okay, so this gives me a, a fairly decent measurement of the antenna, one of the elements. I'm going to cut this off at about um, 105 inches. Right now, I mean, we're past 10. I do that on purpose just so that um, if there's a break in the wire or whatever, as I'm, I'm messing with it and soldering it, that I don't have to worry about it getting it too short. So I'm going to cut it off about 105, and then I'm going to put it up in a tree. And most likely SWR will be high, won't be perfect. So I'll bring it back down, but I want to start at 105 just to make sure, because you never know what can happen. Okay, I have stripped three inches away from the end. Now, <clears throat> I didn't know this before, but this has had a lot of water damage, so it is not the best looking copper, so this will need to be cleaned up a lot. Um, that basically means the antenna ain't gonna last that long, you know, but that's okay, it's a temporary antenna. So what I'm gonna do is, this is going to be attached to itself, so instead of cutting, trimming your antenna, we're just going to be moving it up and down because of course, when it touches itself, it's going to shorten it electrically, so you don't have to worry about that. So I have two uh, bottle caps here. I just put a hole in one of them and put the copper through. I cleaned the copper up best I could. It's kind of hard to see on the video. It looks pretty dark, but uh, that's all been scraped as much as I can scrape it without uh, worrying too much about it breaking. So uh, now we're going to attach some of the nylon rope to the uh, other side of that hole. Okay, they're both done here. Now, where the wire connects to itself is the 102 inch mark. Um, now, of course, that means the antenna has been electrically shortened because it's shorted out here, which means this part, this roughly one inch part here, has become the uh, last bit of wire. So that each one, of the, they're about 103 now. Each one's 103 inches. Um, I decided to use blue and orange for my bottle caps because they are complementary colors. They are on the opposite side of the color wheel because I used to be a painter. Haha, <laughs> remember that. Okay, let's get this finished and uh, hung up in a tree. This is the rope I'll be using today. It's nylon. I like using nylon because it's um, synthetic. It doesn't decay and of course it's fairly hydrophobic. It doesn't like taking on water. Um, now due to capillary action, we're going to get water in this string or rope, whatever you'd like to call this, but it's small enough and thin enough that it can't hold that much water. Water is something we don't want to uh, mess with our antenna because now we're using spacers, of course, with the bottle caps, but if we weren't and we hooked it directly to the rope that we were using, and it rained that day, well that could mess your SWR up entirely. Um, yes, so be sure to check your SWR when it rains, because you never know when things like that might happen. So I've secured the other end of the nylon rope here, you see, to uh, just a piece of something I found near my brother's welding bench. And uh, hopefully it won't slip off because there's a little hole there. Um, and I got a piece of wood, a fairly long flexible piece of wood. We're gonna do the leverage fishing pole effect and toss this motherfucker up there, somewhere. We're gonna catch something. Might be an STD. Let's do it. Sorry, I had to give you a little bit of redneck, right? We got what we wanted there. Um, it's attached up into that limb there. It's not as high as I want it to be, of course, but it's kind of hard to get it on a specific limb when you're trying to throw between other limbs. So, oh well. This will be good enough for testing anyway because we probably got to bring it down several times. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down and uh, we'll get started on the checking of the SWR. Right. So the bottom is weighted down. Uh, it's not supposed to be just doing that, but it's still fine because it's keeping it straight. That's what we want. Um, the coaxial cable is a bit short and it's pulling the antenna at a bit of a strange angle, but uh, that'll be rectified soon. We'll straighten it up. So uh, I would definitely get this a lot higher if I were you guys, but we're gonna test it here. And if we possibly can, unfortunately, because the coax is so short, I can't uh, do much as far as getting it much higher. But uh, if I were you guys, I'd really put it up. Oh, on that limb right there, that's probably twice the height. And uh, you really get out. Uh, all right, I'm gonna check the SWR for the first time now. Um, should be about 103 inches on each end. Fairly uh, low to the ground, so that will affect SWR. Go ahead and set. We're on channel 40. Damn finicky ass meter. Really high. You know why? Hmm? No. Well, Andrew, <laughs> if you look at the back, I have made a critical mistake. We'll do it. That'll do it. All right, we are on 40. It does make a difference when you uh, hook the goddamn antenna up. We do have people talking, so we're gonna go down. Actually, we got a lot of people talking. 38's booming. So let's go 37. Okay, it's pretty low. Let's try to get that set right. It's a little bit hard to get it set right right now. Probably because we're so close to the antenna. Okay, that's about 1.1. Uh, Let's go down. To... One. We set. Yeah, we're so close to the antenna. I think we're getting some stuff going on but that's flat good it's been 19 it's set all right did a little over one don't even have to tune it don't even have to tune it let's see if we can get a contact all right we're on uh 28 which is known as am skip land basically people use am go ahead and uh, call for a radio check Break for radio check. How do you go closer to that? Break for radio check. We can't get a. Uh, Let's try 19. Yeah. Fifteen. Break for radio check. My God, we got to skip everywhere, man. You're hearing bleed over from six. Go to six, you're here. See? You gonna try six? No. Six got megawatts on it. Well, at least kilowatts. Well, someone's singing. I reckon. I ain't good at it, though. <laughs> yeah, CB radio's dead. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. Radio. Yeah, it's so dead, man. Jesus Christ. Looks like we're going to have to try later. I guess. Okay. We managed, we wanted to get this a little higher, so we managed to uh, use a fishing pole here. Yeah. Um, now, Peanut, I want you to wiggle this... Uh, this fishing pole, and we'll see where we got it. Keep wiggling it. What? 
<laughs> I can't believe where that's going. The orange showing pretty good. Oh great, it's so much better now. It's coming back down, yeah. I can't even tell. There we go. Got it. Yep. Got it back. Yep. Sweet. Nice. Okay, she's a lot higher up now. We could not hit the first limb again, pulled out, so this will do just fine. Okay, so I've tied the bottom of it and uh, the top. It's a little bit um, of a V right now, but uh, we're just gonna the reason it's a V is because I have tied my coaxial cable to keep it at about a 90 degree angle, uh, best I can, you know, just to cut down on common mode interference on the braid so uh we're going to check out uh the johnson we got the johnson messenger hooked up and uh you can hear it over here now squelch is down what the hell I think it's Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, we get Mexico. That's good. The fading is because when the signal hits the ionosphere, um, the polarization gets all twisted, so you'll fade in and out. And that's how you know it's skipped. Anyways. Let's try it. North Carolina 150, CQ, CQ, North Carolina 150, Johnson Messenger Barefoot. CQ, CQ, North Carolina 150, barefoot. Well, you have a good one, conditions are rough, rough, rough. CQ, CQ, North Carolina 150, barefoot radio, CQ. CQ, CQ, North Carolina 150, barefoot. Can I get a radio check? CQ, CQ, North Carolina 150, barefoot radio check. Well, here's the good thing about it. Um, due to the law of reciprocity, um, the antenna's great because the better you receive, the better you transmit. Unfortunately, um, we're barefoot and we don't have a lot of power and uh, even even still, you know, I've we've talked Skip, you and I, yeah. for 600 miles on the Wilson 500. That was in the truck. Yeah, in the truck. So, it's very possible to talk Skip, um, AM Skip, with n no enhancements, no burner, but when everyone else is talking, you can't get through. Yeah, you just you're not gonna you're not gonna get anything. This might be a good one. CQ, CQ, North Carolina 150, barefoot radio. CQ, CQ, North Carolina 150.
settled in on Jenny, uh, in a, in a, uh, Shooks, the Carolinas. Hey, this is uh, MC 150, North Carolina 150 on a Johnson Messenger 250. Solid State 1976 Barefoot Radio. Turner Mike, hello out there. Thank you there, lucky boy. You're blowing my ears up. We just talked to fucking Florida. <laughs> okay. There we go. <laughs> it's Johnny Jones. I'm here at home. And I'll see you later.